I'm about to solve this math problem. But before I do, I'm going to give you a chance to solve this thing faster than me. Here is the question. We have negative 14 times 3 sevenths minus 1 half. Now, feel free to use a calculator, but if you think you have the answer, put that into the comment section and maybe tell me how you solved it and about how much time it took for you to get the solution. I think I can solve this problem in about 10 seconds, and I'm going to do this in real time. But before I do, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, come on over to my site, tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so I'm going to solve this problem using a very powerful math shortcut. I'm going to fully explain this shortcut later in the video. I'm also going to solve this problem using kind of a standard approach, but uh, let me go ahead and show you how quickly I can get the answer. So this is going to be two times three, which is six minus seven times one. That's seven over seven times two, which is 14. So this is gonna be negative 1 14th, and I need to multiply that by negative 14. So the answer here is a positive one. Okay, so did you beat my time? If you did, that is fantastic. You definitely get a happy face and an A+. Plus, but as long as you got it right, even if it took you a little bit more time, that's what counts. But you definitely want to understand this shortcut. And before I explain uh, this uh, really powerful shortcut, matter of fact, this may be one of the most uh, powerful shortcuts that I know in math. It's going to be, uh, it's going to make your life with fractions much, much easier. Let's just do a quick review on how to use kind of a standard approach to solve this problem. So before we start any math work here, we need to consider the correct order to do this problem. Actually, there's two approaches you can take and uh, you want to always take the easiest approach. So one thing you could do is do this work inside of the parentheses. So if you're thinking about PEMDAS and you're saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, don't we have to do what's inside of parentheses first? Yes, that's true. Okay, this is the order of operations, by the way, if you haven't seen this acronym. Uh, P stands for parentheses or grouping symbols. So you have to do this first. And then E stands for exponents or powers. And then M and D stands for multiplication and division. We'll do uh, any multiplication and division, whatever we see first from left to right, and then any addition and subtraction last, whatever we see first from left to right. So this is just a quick review on the proper order of operations. So you kind of do want to start here within the parentheses, but that's not the only thing you could do. You could take this negative 14 here and use the distributor property and multiply it uh, to this difference. Okay, so that's another approach you could take. So just as long as you know that you do have two options here. But what I want to do is focus in on subtracting these fractions because that's probably what most of you did. But uh, here we have 3 sevenths minus 1 half. Now, uh, when we have fractions, you cannot subtract or add fractions unless the denominators are the same. And you can see here we have different denominators, so we're going to need to find the lowest common denominator. Okay, so the LCD in this problem is 14. Now, the lowest common denominator is a big topic in fractions, and this little shortcut technique that I used to solve the problem, I basically disregarded the need to find the LCD. Again, I'll talk more about that uh, later in the video. But in this case, the lowest common denominator is 14. This is the lowest number that both 7 and 2 can uh, divide into without a remainder. Now, if you are having a tough time on how to find the LCD, this is actually a pretty big uh, topic in math. I'm going to uh, give you some quick recommendations. One, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel on basic math, LCD, and fractions. You also may want to check out my Math Foundations course. You can find a link to that in the description of this video. But uh, just know that uh, the LCD, the lowest common denominator, is 14. So we need to change this fraction problem such that the denominators are 14. So let's go ahead and change the denominators so they are both 14. 
So how do we change a7 to a14? Easy, just multiply it by a2. But if we multiply the denominator by 2, we also have to multiply the numerator by a 2 as well. So we end up with 6 over 14. 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 times 7 is 14. So this fraction here is equivalent to the fraction 3 sevenths, but it has our lowest common denominator, 14. Okay, so how do we change a 2 into a 14? Easy, multiply it by 7. But again, we have to multiply the numerator by that number as well. So we end up with 7 over 14. So now we have common denominators. Okay, so when you are adding and subtracting fractions and you have a common denominator, uh, it's very easy to do the math. All we have to do is the respective operation in the numerator and cute that denominator. So 6 14 minus 7 over 14 is going to be equal to 6 minus 7. Okay, this is going to be the numerator here. We're going to uh, subtract these numbers in the numerator over our common denominator. But here you have to be very careful because we are dealing with positive and negative numbers. So six minus seven is the same thing as six plus a negative seven, which is negative one. So our answer here is negative one over 14. Now, if you haven't learned positive and negative numbers, don't feel bad. This is all just kind of a review of uh, the concepts in basic math, but really you start uh, learning about positive and negative numbers in courses like pre-algebra. Okay, so now we have negative 1 14th. So our problem really comes down to this here. So we have negative 14 and we did all this fraction work and this turned out to be a negative 1 14th. So now we just simply have to do this multiplication, negative 14 times negative 1 14th. If you're enjoying the video so far, make sure to hit that subscribe button. This really does help me out on YouTube. And if you're going to do that, hit that bell notification as well so you can get my latest videos. Now, a lot of people think they understand basic math better than they actually do. And really, it's no fault of their own. The longer you have been away from math, the more you will forget. So if you want a great quick review of basic mathematics, this is really, really important, especially if you have any desire to learn things like algebra. Check out my Math Foundations course. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. That will be a perfect start for all of you out there that want to kind of reestablish all these basic math skills that maybe you lost many years ago. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish up this problem. All right, so only one more step to get the final answer here. So negative 14 times negative 14th. Just know that a negative times a negative is a positive. So again, for those of you that don't know your rules with positive and negative numbers, this is pretty easy stuff to learn. But a negative times a negative is a positive. So our final answer here will be positive, but we have a negative 14. And you can think of this as a fraction, if you like. We have negative 14 over 1 times negative 1 over 14. So to multiply fractions, all you have to do is multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So negative 14 times negative 1 is a positive 14 over 1 times 14, which is 14. 14 divided by 14 is a positive 1. Or you can simply cross-cancel these factors right here and a negative times a negative is a positive one, which is the correct answer. Now, if this was your approach, that's perfectly fine. And uh, even if it took you like 30, 40 seconds to do this problem, or maybe a minute or two, no big deal. You only get uh, faster at doing math problems through practice, but you don't want to sacrifice speed for accuracy. Okay, now let's go ahead and talk about this shortcut that I used. And this method is called the bow tie method. This is my little uh, name for it because it looks kind of like a bow tie shape or bow tie pattern like this. And you can use this uh, method to add and subtract fractions. Again, this may be my very uh, best um, tip in terms of math shortcuts. You definitely want to use this to solve problems, not only with arithmetic and numbers in algebra as well. But uh, let's keep this pattern in mind, and here is how it works. So the first thing I'm going to do is this direction right here. We'll call this step one. You have to do uh, this work in this pattern. Again, 
The idea here is to add and subtract fractions without having to find the lowest common denominator. So step one is going to be this direction. Step two is going to be in this direction, okay, right here. And again, you have to follow uh, this uh, pattern in this order. And then the last step will be this uh, direction right here, step three. Okay, so this will be step three and this will be step two. And uh, let's go ahead and see how this works. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is take this denominator and multiply by this numerator. So 2 times 3 is 6. So that is our first step. Now, because we have a subtraction problem, we're going to put a subtraction operator right there. And what we're doing here, this little crisscross like so, is building our numerator of the answer. Okay, so that's step one. Now, step two is to go in this direction. So this, this denominator, seven times this numerator, one. So seven times one is seven. Okay, so this is uh, the numerator for our answer, and this is going to be over the denominator, which is our final pattern this way, seven times two, which, of course, is 14. All right, so six minus seven, again, is negative one over 14, which of course is the final answer. But if you notice here, I didn't do any uh, anything with the LCD. I didn't have to think about that. I just simply took these steps. Now, of course, I have this negative 1 14th. The final, final answer is to take this negative 14 and multiply it by this. But the shortcut here is to really, you know, make this uh, subtraction of fractions uh, much, much easier. Very, very quick. I didn't have to stop and think about the LCD and change these fractions, etc. Now, the only drawback with this uh, bow time method is sometimes you end up with a denominator that is not the lowest common denominator. So uh, just kind of keep uh, that in mind. So your answer, your final answer when using the bow time method may not be fully simplified. But uh, let's take a look at one quick example of how easy this is uh, in algebra. So let's say I had x over y plus w over z. So even if you don't know how to do algebra and you know this um, or how to add fractions in algebra, but you understand this bow time method, you're like, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm just going to follow this pattern like so. You will get the right answer. Okay, so z times x in algebra, z times x, we can write as zx, right? So this means multiplication. So we're going to take this and multiply by that plus... Our second step is going to be this right here, y times uh, w. So we can write that as yw over our last step is uh, y times z. So this is yz, which is the correct answer. So as long as you understand this bow time method, you can do algebra, arithmetic, anything you want with fractions without having to understand the LCD. But uh, this is not to say that you don't need to understand how to find the lowest common denominator because this is extremely important in mathematics as well. Okay, so hopefully this little video was entertaining, but more importantly, you learned something. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you need help with basic mathematics, make sure to check out my Math Foundations course. You can find a link to that in the description of this video. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.